Hey, people, there's still time to vote for us as best local podcast of Charleston for 2023. If you head to the charlestoncitypaper.com and click on the best of 2023 page, uh, you can cast your vote for us, uh, Apple Juice for Two, as best local podcast. Uh, we'd really appreciate it. And before we get to uh, Chris, Chris, and Kate, the extra chill crew, uh, just a quick disclaimer. Um, when they came, I wasn't set up for three people, so you'll hear that Kate is like, sharing the mic between the two Chris's in between her on the couch for the audio listeners um because you can't see that but just know that that's why it might sound a little weird um and again you can vote for us as best local podcast in Charleston 2023 until this coming Wednesday the 8th and you can go ahead and vote uh by going to the charlestoncitypaper.com okay <laughs> or you can click the link in our Instagram bio and the link will also probably be in this description probably be in this description um so go ahead and do that apple juice Apple Juice for Two. Apple Juice for Two. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another Apple Juice for Two exclusive interview. I'm your host, Cameron Allen, and today we are thrilled to be joined by the team behind Extra Chill. Uh, we have Kate Bryan, writer and editor in the middle. Uh, we also have Chris Herber right here, founder, editor. <laughs> Huber, sorry. Chris Huber. Huber, thank you. Uh, and then Chris Gardner, the public figure. Paid spokesperson persona uh, in the house here. Yeah, feel free to move the arms around however you want. I don't know what um, to do with my hands. I'm yeah, <laughs> you're fine. Yeah, um, guys, thanks so much for coming by. Thanks Thank for you. having us. Thank you. Absolutely, it's exciting to have you guys here. Um, so just a little background. Um, tell me about what each of you guys do. Like, what are each of your roles in the Extra Chill um, Foundation? Um, well, I started the website. Okay. Um, so I kind of am the one pulling the strings behind the scenes. Okay. Um, Kate writes about new music okay. and uh, helps with the roundup and graphics mm -hmm. every week and also is starting to take on more nice. responsibilities, like a newsletter that we're going to start sending out here. Okay. And Chris Gardner is... I'm just uh, like the real fan of the music. <laughs> yeah. I guess you can say. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm at the show's... I'm talking about it. You're in the field mm -hmm. yeah. and stuff. Okay. Yeah, I'm in the wild. You're on the ground. Like <laughs> on the ground. Yeah, boots on the ground. They're all mm -hmm. fans. But. Um, well, so, okay, specifically, like, how did you get in uh, involved with Chris? And, like, how did, you know, when you started this all, how did you go about getting people to work with you on this? Uh, it was just me for a really long time. Okay. Um, and then, I guess, over time, I met more and more people in the music scene. Okay. And... Eventually, I decided to hire a writer, mm -hmm. and I put out a call for writers, and my friend uh, Selby from Easy Honey told me that Kate was dope and that I should hire her. <laughs> okay, so cool. I did. And Chris Gardner, I've known him for a while just from being at shows, and I knew that he knew everybody in Charleston. Uh -huh. And uh, my He friend... approached me in a really cool way, I gotta say. He was How like, did he approach you? Yeah, what's like, the story behind he that? He was like, uh, I have this idea... Uh, that I've been thinking about for a while. Let me pitch it to you and then just go and like chew on it for a, a little bit and then come back to me. And I was like, damn, that was cool. <laughs> 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 and he was like, yeah, I want you to like help us with social media and come on board. And I didn't want to like agree right away. Mm -hmm. But, uh, they're trying to keep it cool. Yeah. Right, yeah. You, know, like, you can't yeah, be lame and excited. It's like when girl's <laughs> like, yeah, you gotta be like, yeah, maybe, maybe I'll see. That. Yeah, no exclamation points but, or anything. <laughs> yeah, it's been awesome. I mean, it's yeah, you so guys fun. have been it's going since, like, what, 2018? Has uh, it no, I started the website in 2011, actually. Oh, really? Okay, yeah. interesting. Um, So... What, what, uh, where were you in your life when you started? Like, were you in college? I was a freshman in college. Okay, gotcha. And what did you study? Like, in, well, at the time, I was a biology major. Uh huh. Uh, I eventually became an English major, creative okay. writing major. Nice, nice, nice. So, are you from Charleston? And like, did did you grow up around here, or how did you get involved in Charleston specifically? I'm just gonna move this closer to you as well. Yeah, that's cool. Um, no, I'm from Long Island, New York. Oh, okay. I went cool. to the College of Charleston initially to be on the sailing team nice and then kind of just i've always liked music started this website realized i like to write and it's grown from there yeah did you like grow up playing music and stuff or like always just like a fan around in your family and stuff or like uh i've always just been a fan right really. never never played music i've written some 
So we call mu- musician adjacent. Yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, like growing up, did your fa- were, were your parents musicians, or were like were your fam- were they also just fans of music, or was the arts around in your family at all? Honestly, up? not really. I'm like the black sheep of my family. Basically, uh, my family is very into sports, and okay, uh, I kind of went the opposite way. Right. <laughs> For me, it was though. My my parents were all in on music. Mm-hmm. My grandfather as well, and my dad had like a whole library of records really okay right? and my brother like cartoons and baseball cards and i like okay al green mm-hmm. nice you know? <laughs> and so i would say to my dad i'd be like hey dad i think i like this girl at school like what should i think about it and he's like well i could tell you but uh jerry butler the ice man could tell you better <laughs> oh my and god he, like jerry butler was this guy he was like the <laughs> the lead singer in curtis mayfield's band the impressions yeah. And he would be like, go listen to Jerry Butler's greatest hits. Uh-huh. And when you're ready to have this conversation, like, I'll be here. Wow. And so I get you go and you listen to the songs. And what I like about Jerry Butler is it's very like, it's like, hey, here's a song about how hard it is to be a man. Uh-huh. And have, like, be a dad and have to support a family yeah. when you're, like, kid needs new baseball shoes right and you're like how do i afford that Uh uh-huh and so for me this is like the blueprint for my life yeah the way that i understood what life was like was he was like hey go discover it for yourself Mm -hmm. and these people are you know here to teach you that definitely no that's so interesting as like a father figure, you know, kind of pointing his son in that direction to answer his question. Like, that sounds like that was basically the talk for you. Like, go listen to these R&B records. (laughs) Yeah. It's like, uh, go listen to, like, I'm really like this girl. He's like, chill out. He's like, you need to go, (laughs) he's like, you need to go listen to Percy Sledge. Yeah. Okay. And he had Percy Sledge, I think, wrote that song, When a Man Loves a Woman. Nice. Um, But he has another song It goes, uh, He's like, love's not an overnight thing. Just mm. Take time to know her. Yeah. There's a song. Uh huh. You know? Wow, there's so many it's lessons. It's not an overnight <laughs> you know? thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's beautiful. So, I mean, growing up too, a lot of times people like rely on their music taste coming from like, I mean, some friend or some old dude at a record shop who like shows you the stuff. You know what I mean? But it's interesting that you get it straight from the source, straight from your dad. Um, Kate, what about you? Like, did you grow up around music or like writing and stuff? And um, yeah, so I've always been interested both kind of in music and writing. So this is like amazing that I'm getting to do this now. But yeah. definitely sort of similar to Chris in that um, my dad was a huge music fan. So I mean, lots of classic rock, lots of just like great old music. Um, nice. He was always like quizzing me on trivia and stuff. You know, nice. in the car on road trips, things like that. So. Um, never been like, uh, I've never played an instrument, actually did piano for a little bit, but, Mm. um, but, and none of my parents like played music, but were always super, super interested in it. So, yeah, no, that's really important. I mean, like, I feel like appreciating music like that, or like just having that capacity to just like be a fan of it all. And like, Mm -hmm. you know, understanding the trivia, like, like the different people and the stories and stuff, like there's so much there to soak up and appreciate in that sense. Mm -hmm. Um, when it- I do want to give Kate some praise real quick. Okay. <laughs> because what what I think is cool about what she does is, so it would be like <laughs> trying to explain a song to somebody who's deaf that can't hear it. Right. You know? <laughs> and she, like, writes about songs. And you can, like, almost understand and feel what it sounds like without hearing it. Right. And that's kind of like a, you know, that's a that's a challenging thing. I can't do that. No, that's a skill. I mean, like, you said, to put that into other terms. Not bad at all. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Those are high marks. High marks. <laughs> Thank um, you so much. When it comes to, like, writing, are, are there any people specifically, Kate, that inspired you? Like, writing styles, authors, or journalists and stuff? Oh, gosh. I mean, way too many to list. Um, yeah. So many throughout my life. Uh You know, I went through the classic, like, middle school, high school, Ernest Hemingway, like, classics phase. Um, Nice. You know, a little bit older, loved Joan Didion. Um, There are a lot of cool writers right now that I'm loving. But, 
um, yeah, I don't think there's one specific person that has has been the main inspiration, but just trying to read as much as possible um, mm-hmm. and kind of form my form my own style. Have you ever heard of uh, William Shakespeare? <laughs> oh, <laughs> I heard of a little guy yeah. named Shakespeare. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. He's going on tour soon, right? I think <laughs> he actually has what's crazy is William Shakespeare has the largest English speaking vocabulary in history. Do you guys believe that Shakespeare was a actual guy or do you think it was like a bunch of different people amalgamated or what are your opinions on that? I don't Conspiracy. Know. I think one person. Really? Nice. I haven't decided. Mm-hmm. I uh I would love for it to just be one person. That's what I was just going to say. Like, yeah. that's what I want to believe. Yeah. Right. You know, that was There's a this theory. argument, too, in art in general, which is like, um, you got a guy like Jeff Koons, who's like one of the most famous artists in the world. He commands like the highest prices for his art. But he has a studio of like 50 or 100 people that work for him. Mm-hmm. And they spend five years making a sculpture that's like his concept and his idea and they're like well all right <laughs> what do you sense. mean like, yeah. yeah and so then you have somebody who can just go out there and paint it yeah like this dude Ger- gerhard richter mm-hmm. and so what what do you think like is yeah to me it's it's kind of i don't know it's wild that i guess like there's an artist who can have a vision and then get people on the same page Or, I mean, to me, mostly is that he has people that he can trust to, like, bring that out. You know, I don't know how he deals with that or if that's even, like, if that's part of the process to him, like, to see what the other people put into his work. Mm -hmm. Um, But, I mean, personally, that sounds like a lot to manage. It sounds like a nightmare Mm -hmm. and a headache. (laughs) (laughs) Like, imagine giving notes to, like, your guy, like, this dude who spent, like, 17 hours on a canvas painting. Like, nah, I don't know about that. Go back and work on it. Yeah, exactly. Um, but like specifically with writing and stuff, um, you know, you guys do an online music publication, um, like in terms of like what kind of function those outlets and stuff serve, uh, culture in like a broad sense, what do you think like the role that plays? Like thinking, I guess in the larger sense, like a thing like Rolling Stone magazine or something like that, like, do you think that kind of enhances the cultural conversation or like diminishes it in certain ways? Do you mean us existing well just like the not like uh, what you do like the I, writing i of think it we like... definitely diminish the cultural conversation really i think yeah our presence definitely takes away from <laughs> yeah okay <laughs> i mean it's bigger, so. <laughs> <laughs> no actually that's a good point i'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. yeah I was, I was gonna say i sense some hostility in that no response. no 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 i think uh and not you specifically locally i mean like on a larger broader sense like the mm-hmm. big boys you know what i mean like mm-hmm. rolling stone when they do the greatest hundred singers of all time shit like that mm-hmm. rolling stone doesn't know shit yeah you know? it's like they play the, these lists, lists are definitely. terrible mm-hmm. uh-huh mm-hmm. but anyway uh, I think, well, instead of, we're just, like, pure stoke, was my friend Kevin Shields would say. So yeah. We're not, like, really critical or tearing anyone down. We're just, like, I guess it's just, this is why I can't write, is because I just like everything. <laughs> 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 oh, because at the end of the day, you guys are all fans of music. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Right, and that's right. kind of, like, you're appreciating it in that sense. Um, I guess getting more granular and thinking about the function and role that an outlet like that plays in a smaller scene like Charleston. Um, I mean, there's nothing else like this in Charleston, I feel like, you know what Mm -hmm. I mean? Um, What kind of, like, how have you seen that play out for yourselves, like, in terms of your response with the people in the community here and stuff? Like, do you get a good response from artists and stuff? Or, like, what's that that been like? We do. Um, I have made, slash, I know these... People have also made a lot of great friends through the process. Right. Uh, And also, I think the value of Extra Chill existing in the local music scene, it kind of puts everything in one place. So it's it's not necessarily for the artist. It's for the listener and the fan uh, to come and find out about what's happening in Charleston. And yeah. uh, I think it helps local bands, like, for example, when they have an article on Extra Chill and they're trying to book a tour somewhere else. Mm-hmm. And the promoter or the venue owner is going to Google 
their band name and find oh like extra chill wrote about five of their songs like yeah before they even went on any tour they're gonna be more it seems like they're more likely to get yeah the next step in their career if we have but if it we, also is that put it's like we get messages from people like artists and it just the fact that someone is listening and cares mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. is like it means so much. Definitely, you know, yeah. you're like I'm doing this, but does anyone care? Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, it makes the people feel heard and, and seen it's and like, stuff. yeah, just even being a sounding board or just letting someone know, like, hey, we we see you, we care, and we like it. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, and like, also what you were saying too, it kind of like adds a certain level of credibility to these people, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? When to it's, the whole scene, I think, ex- yes, definitely. What do you yeah. think? <laughs> yeah, I think y'all, y'all nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> right, just, I'm, oh, we, I keep kicking it out further and further away from me, yeah, no, you're fine. <laughs> um, yeah, to me, that's interesting, like, because specifically in Charleston, I, I guess this is true anywhere, I'm just don't know from personal experience, but like. The different genres kind of like it's fragmented in a sense. You know what I mean? Like there are different pockets of different people doing different things. But to have it all coming through one publication and being assessed in that sense makes it one cohesive scene. You know what I mean? Um, I wanted to ask you specifically about like, you know, the different genres in Charleston and like those different spaces. Like you guys just hired a new hip hop uh, writer, right? Yeah, shout out Indie Gold. Indie mm-hmm. Gold. Nice. Um, Brilliant guy. Nice. Great smile. Oh, wow. <laughs> Big credentials. <laughs> Sounds like qualifications. Um, yeah. You have to have that. To exactly. <laughs> right. Uh-huh. Um, so, like, there are different pockets of genres in Charleston and stuff. Like, what do you think, from your experience, is, like, the most prolific scene in Charleston right now? Uh, that's, a, that's a hard question. Mm-hmm. Um because each scene has its own fans and uh, they kind of act dif- like you know it's a different it's, thing. It's each. like you go to the poorhouse, you get one, you get one scene. You go to Royal, yeah. you get another scene. You go to the Purple Buffalo, you get another scene. Mm-hmm. And sometimes those scenes do mix together. Um, but it it is. A, I would say that there is definitely some separation. That one thing that I personally want to do with Extra Chill is kind of you know blur the lines between the scenes and make it one big cohesive family kind of I guess we're all supporting each other and trying to yeah you know make put the scene on the map and make it so that bigger artists when they're booking a tour will want to come to Charleston because they know the scene here is good and they know the fans are really into it um maybe I got off track a little bit but no that's true I think it's a great question because it's something I've Mm -hmm. and it's something I'm concerned about and I've been thinking about Mm -hmm. is um there's sort of like this older guard or sort of like the senior class if you will of yeah. like the like Justin Osborne and Susto and Babe Club mm. the Brave Baby like these bands that the were, veteran bands they were like the, yeah. when I was first getting into Charleston's music scene I was like these are awesome you know uh-huh. and then these bands like Whitehall and tennis courts and stuff. They like moot and crybaby and move to uh, New York. Mm-hmm. And I guess to some degree, I'm like, who's who's gonna step up? Right. You know? Yeah. <laughs> and um, it's pretty exciting because I think there's a lot of good bands that yeah. are. Yeah. There's a lot um, of talent in Charleston. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Definitely. Um, I feel like yeah. I mean, it's like. There are the big cities where people go to try to make things happen. And Charleston's never really been one of those places, you know. Even when you think of, like, Charlotte or um, Atlanta and stuff like that, people will, I guess, kind of try to make a following here and then take it to New York or whatever Mm -hmm. or L.A. and stuff. But, yeah, it's like who's going to be the, you know, band from here? You know what I mean? Who's stepping up? I think Mantras is a really kick-ass band. Really? And uh, they're young kids. Like, uh, I think they're awesome. I'm excited about In Vinegar. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, those are all great, great bands and stuff. Um, when it comes to like sound and style, 
do you guys feel like, you know, amongst all those bands, a lot of those people I've never even heard of, um, but it makes sense because you guys are keeping on the pulse of it all. Do you notice any trends or like stylistically and like sounds of, I guess thinking specifically with like the indie rock um, thing, that niche, um, do you see any trends and sounds and styles like that or whatever? I think uh, people nowadays are more into like shoegazy, more like noise oriented music than they yeah. were in the past. But although there were, there have always been popular bands in the southeast that do that kind of style like zach mexico and secret guest has always done that (laughs) um but it seems like a lot of the newer bands are coming up kind of in that genre that i've been noticing um but other than that i mean folk rock has always done well in charleston i mean that's true (laughs) people here love singer songwriter stuff uh especially if you can write a song that people can relate to uh you know, and it just kind of goes, the the weather here goes well with, like, that acoustic, like, yeah. you know, outside, no shoes on kind of thing. Right, yeah. The yeah. bar scene. Like, yeah. Yeah. No, that makes sense. If you ever see somebody play music and they don't have shoes on, <laughs> they're about to fuck shit up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I swear to God. Like, if you see someone, right, like, right. Jeff Caldwell doesn't wear shoes. Mm-hmm. This guy is, like, he's so good that it, he's just, like, toying. Yeah. Like and, uh, yeah. Anyway, that was just a thought. No, that's true. I, whenever I go somewhere and I see some old old men with iPads on stands, I know that shit's about to be fire. <laughs> 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 no, I'm sure. um, it's just like, I can't, I can't remember all my own lyrics. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> oh, how does uh, Margaritaville go? I need to uh, get the chord sheet for that. <laughs> um, yeah, to me, it's like interesting because Charleston is a lot of tourism and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that is kind of reflected in not even just the music, but the entertainment scene in general. Um, you know, there's a kind of a give and take between the people who are trying to do it, an original thing and then people who are kind of just, I guess, serving the uh, the restaurant crowd or whatever, the tourism mm-hmm. crowd. Um, do you feel like in the stories that, you know, you've uh, written about or the people that you've met, like, have you ever seen any give and take in that struggle with, like, trying to uh, make something original in a town that kind of just, like, rewards covers and stuff like that? Okay, take it away. Yeah, take oh, it okay. away. Well, I, you know, <laughs> I was just going to say that I think one of the things that's interesting is when you watch some of the bands um, that are just getting started and then as they move um, through. I'm sorry. Oh. I'm talking to the red one. Okay. That one's a good one. Sorry. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Um, Thank you. Sorry. I was going to say uh, when you watch some of these bands that when you kind of watch their progression from just getting started in Charleston to like moving forward within a few years, building up a bigger following. Um, I think it's cool to see how in the beginning they do have to sort of like build more covers into their sets and maybe play it some places that the covers do better than their original music. But as they sort of like power through and keep building their, their following, they get to, you know, put out more of their original music. So I think there's definitely a struggle in terms of just like bands booking gigs, um, that people enjoy, they do have to like sort of play into that a little bit when they're getting started. And then Mm -hmm. sort of when they've built up enough of their own, um, their own following, their own crowd, they can kind of, you know, indulge in sharing more of their original work. So I think that's always a fun progression to see. Mm -hmm. um, Because I know, you know, most of the bands that, and the artists that we write about and focus on, you know, we want to share their original music, their their new creative things that they're thinking of. Um, But, I think yeah. that's part of the process for a lot of the bands getting started here. That's true. I think I just real quick. Yeah. I think uh, what <laughs> what's interesting is that uh, in Charleston we're like an hour away from like ninety five, like mm-hmm. that like north south mm-hmm. like touring line, and so there's a lot of people that don't come here mm-hmm. because it's out of the way. Mm-hmm. Right. You yeah. know, it's very easy to just stay on ninety five and just be like up and down. And sense. I think that sort of contributes to some degree to this like really cool sort of like local mm. ecosystem that we yeah. have here. Interesting. Like a, in terms of like the big, a lot of big people don't come here. So it's kind of like we have our own insulated yeah. 
Well, there's a demand for music, and we're meeting it ourselves rather than mm. uh, yeah. Yeah, having a, a big one. show to go to every single weekend like they have in Atlanta or Charlotte or right. Nashville or any other big city on the East Coast. Yeah, no, that's true. Yeah, like they're kind of set up to just um, facilitate the acts that come through and yeah. stuff. And here it's like from the ground up, everybody here is doing that. There's plenty of music fans in this town. There are, there are a lot of them. I, yeah, I feel like, you know, it's always been like there are a lot of people passionate about that. Mm -hmm. making their own music and stuff like that here, um, trying to get it out and stuff like that, you know? It's a special place. You think so? Yeah, I really do. Yeah. And uh, at, first of all, Martin Luther King Day. It's true. Represent. And, Shout out, um, I'm okay. I think we should acknowledge that especially, you know? And in music is been a part of like Charleston for a long time. Yeah, definitely. I, I don't want to go too far down the rabbit hole. Just Google the Daniel Reverend Daniel Jenkins Family Orphanage, which is uh, huh. it used to be up kind of by a rec room. Yeah, and it was an orphanage uh, where like after like the slaves were freed in the late 1800s, people like obviously wanted to get out of here. But they couldn't always take their children with them, and so they. It was like kids ended up just getting dropped off at orphanages. Mm -hmm. And there was this orphanage in town, and it was more like a trade school. And they would, you would they'd be like, oh, you're a uh, carpenter. Uh -huh. and, you're like, and for everyone that they like couldn't assign a, a job to, they're like, you're a musician. Wow. And a lot of people think that they invented jazz music. Interesting. It was oh. called the Charleston Sound. Just Google it. Yeah, no, I'm actually... I did want to ask you guys about some of that stuff, and that's really interesting to me, kind of just like the history of entertainment or show business, I guess, if you will, in Charleston specifically. Um, I, I was going to ask, like, how do you think the, like, Charleston has obviously a really uh, haunted and tumultuous history. Mm -hmm. um, how do you think that's reflected into the scene that we have today? Well, uh I mean, go listen to like a Kendrick Lamar album. <laughs> this is my to Pimple Butterfly. Like, uh, the just, end. No, I don't like. know. I mean, that's like there's there is a um, a local album that is kind of about that. Really, and it's uh, Benny Starr, oh, yeah. a Water album. Okay, and he recorded it live at the Charleston Music Hall in 2018. It might be 2019, but that whole album kind of goes into Charleston's tumultuous past and how there's like a dichotomy between people who would be native to this area and people who are coming in and uh, a lot of Charleston's history is still visible today if you look at it yeah uh, from a for, with the right knowledge I guess definitely yeah um, well yeah you need to know where it all came from you have to know what what yeah you have to know what to recognize um uh, and I, th it's just a tough thing because there's a lot of, it's a tough thing to talk about and it's a tough thing to, to deal with because it's been, it's been ingrained in the society for so long and the best thing that we can do as people living in it today is to do better, lead by example, right? you know, be the best that we can be and, and, you know, make sure everyone's voice is able to be heard and definitely and, yeah. also just in the, not for like forget about it or pretend like it never happened. Oh yeah, right. that's stuff. true like, too. Yeah, like that album that you just told me about. That's really interesting. I'll it's have to amazing, check that out. Honestly. It's one of the best. Oh, it's really good. You guys, you guys, this isn't rap. This is movie shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's really good. It's, it's, it was, it's, it's cinematic. Because well, he like, like really, well, is he telling a story something through see. it and stuff? The whole like, thing is a story, and it's it's very well thought out. And you know, he did it at the music hall, so the recording is very nice, very good. Um, I recommend it to anybody living this in Charleston. This band is amazing honestly. too. The four twenty. Yeah, they're called. Really, mm. really that would be one of the best local albums that I've ever heard. Really? I would say yeah. Wow. That, that would. Yeah. Okay. That's. I gotta check that out. When you were saying, Chris, um, about the people at the orphanage trade school or whatever who are getting assigned musician or whatever, you were saying that that kind of made a specific uh, sound style. Yeah. Yes. They called it the Charleston sound. Yeah. And it was like these. Orphan children with a little sort of uh, instruction, but not much at all, were 
they're like, hey, just like, see what happens. Here's like a couple pointers. Right. And then they just develop this unique sound. And anyone from like New Orleans is going to like, dude, come. Because well, they all say that's where jazz started. Yeah, no, yeah. but it started here. Okay. Really? And huh. it was like, <laughs> and the. You the heard it here first, Reverend folks. Reverend Daniel <laughs> Jenkins yeah. Orphanage, they played at two separate presidential inaugurations. They played in front of the Queen in England. Wow. And they went on like tour around the world. And when they sort of disbanded, what happened was these, some of them were like, yeah, we'll go south to New Orleans. And some are like, yeah, we'll go west, northwest to Chicago or north to New York. Is this like uh, Reconstruction, like post Civil War, like late 1800s? This is, or late, like... this is after the repeal of slavery. So, like, uh, people couldn't afford to bring their children with them, but mm -hmm. they were like, I got to get out of here. And so, mm -hmm. what happened was that kids would just get dropped off. And, um, yeah, it's sad, but it, so like when I go when I go to jazz at Bar Mash on Monday nights, it like resonates with me because it they're playing. If you've never been, it's just don't tell too many people, okay? <laughs> <laughs> it's really the coolest shit going, mm -hmm. and uh, it's in this old cigar factory, right? Um, where. Around the same time, there right was, up the street, was, there was like fifteen hundred people working there, and twelve hundred of them were like African Americans, and they were being paid less than their white counterparts. And one day, they had they just walked out. Yeah. Just, they strike. Wow. They did a strike, and they as they were leaving, they were singing this. The song is like "We Shall Overcome," which basically came like the anthem for the civil rights movement. And um, that all happened here. You yeah. Know? Mm -hmm. And um, no, I just think crazy. it's special. When I'm there, like, you know, I appreciate that I get to experience that. Yeah. And uh, no, that's just like the, the weight of that, you know what I mean? And like the space is still there, that building still exists. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and the cigar factory specifically, like the history with all that is crazy. Um, speaking of like that jazz bar or just like venues in general, um, you know, music, especially like a scene requires, um, you know, a certain space to foster that. Um, what do you think? Well, maybe just like list your favorite places where you feel like music is put first or like, you know, it has the best space for musicians to grow and stuff like that. Besides jazz. Away, <laughs> <laughs> I think, Chris, you should have this one. Okay. Uh, I, I have my favorites. Uh, but I, in terms of uh, some of the best places for local music, I think uh, most weekend nights, the Royal American is a good place to catch a local band and meet local musicians and people who are interested in the music scene. That's yeah. That's been – that was the first place that Extra Chill – had a, a show other than actually we did a festival at the Purple Buffalo, but that has been, Royal oh, nice. has been cool. kind of like extra chills home base since the beginning. Oh, nice. Um, Have you guys like put on shows? Like I've done shows. I've done, a, nice. we've done a bunch yeah. of shows at Royal. We did one at the Poor House last year, which is, the Poor House is like, like thank God we have the Poor House. Really? Thing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's such a cool place. It's, it's like yeah. got a great vibe, like the, ownership really cares about the scene and fostering a community and making That's it a place that is like safe and, and happy for people to come and listen to music there and they just book they book the best acts that they can find that are willing to come to Charleston and play and they've developed a relationship with a bunch of good bands and uh, so I can't say enough good things about the Poor House. Nice. Uh, we've got the Music Farm which has been a staple of Charleston's music scene for decades and just got renovated and Charles Sounds amazing. Mm -hmm. it, the sound in Charles, there is Charles very good. Yes, so. I was about to say, Charles is the man. Um, he's mm -hmm. been very supportive of Extra Chill and been um, just the whole time. Is uh, that the guy who um, like manages the music hall? Or music something? hall okay, and nice. the music farm. So he ended up taking over the music farm nice. during COVID and, and him and his team, they renovated the whole place. It's it's way nicer than it was before. Yeah. And it's nice. there. It's a good place. And mm -hmm. the music hall is like pristine 
Yeah, like, music hall's great. It's a different kind of experience to see a show there because it's seated, definitely. and but it sounds. It's hard to say, but I think best sound in town. If you go really? to a seated show there, the sound there is always very clean and and very well done. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I haven't been to the Music Farm since it reopened, but I remember seeing shows there like um, years ago and stuff, mm-hmm. and it always sounded weird, like muffly or just like mm-hmm. kind of resonate you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Not right. I'm going to go see a comedy show there this Wednesday, but I have to get there to nice. see some music soon. I think I'd, I'd let's, let's give a shout out to the Commodore. That's just, true, yeah. Because I, I guess I'm just driving this narrative, but the, the <laughs> Commodore, mm-hmm. which is cool, is that it was like a soul and jazz club mm-hmm. back in the day. Really? And it was on that like part of town where there weren't a lot of white people that went there. You yeah. Know? But mm-hmm. they have the original sign outside, and it's, it was called A Touch of Class. It was like <laughs> a t- kind of place where you like put your suit on. You're right. And you went, and uh, they have a picture on the wall of James Brown singing there. And then around on the ceiling, around the dance floor, they have faces of people that played there. And they're like all the greats. It's like Ella Fitzgerald, my grandfather's Sarah Vaughn, his favorite artist ever, mm-hmm. uh, Duke Ellington, Nat King Cole. Yeah. And I just think it's a cool place. It's got, you know, some historic significance. Yeah. And Do you I know when it when did open? There. Like, how how long has it been around? I couldn't say. Okay. I think that's a question, like, Kate is better suited to <laughs> 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 so we just gonna we are just going to ditch all the hard questions. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I think, you know, for a while. I think, you know, uh, obviously it's under new ownership. Um, it was closed but, for a while too. It was closed for many years, and it really? okay. just recently reopened within the past ten years, maybe five. It was more than five, but less than ten, I yeah. would say. Seven. Yeah, seven, seven. sounds about right. <laughs> nice. But it's cool. You know, it's mm-hmm. like when you're there. It's like I feel like I, I when I go there, I'm like I wish that my grandfather was still alive because I would bring him here. Yeah, yeah. he would. He would love, love it. it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, that that place has got. Just the energy in it that is, uh, I just love being in there. You know what I mean? So like what they say if like these walls could talk, right? Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. If they can't, don't worry, I'll I'll do it. Right. <laughs> 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 Kate, what do you what do you know about the Commodore? Or, you know, like what? Um. Yeah, it's a great place. I've yeah. had a lot of a lot of fun times there. I think, uh, like Chris said, the history is is part of the thing that makes it so interesting and intriguing to um. To go in there and be able to feel a little, a little bit of that, you know, no matter who you're seeing or who mm. you're with, um, yeah. I've heard of um, some, like historically speaking, like you know, in I don't know if you know, but like in Mount Pleasant, um, I think off of uh, what's it called, like Patriots Point or something, there was this uh, building or some like shack. I forget what they called it. There's a name for it, but like you know, a place that the black community would be able to go. You know what I mean? And they mm. had their own space for music and whatnot, and. I'm totally blanking on the name Is of it. Mosquito right? Beach. Yes, that's exactly what I was thinking yeah. of. Um, and but like the building's no longer there. What were you gonna say? I thought that was on it's on John's Island, right? I mean, yeah. I, I if yeah. it's the same thing or not, it's the it's the right. same. Right, that's the same idea same of idea. it. Um, Bill Wilson. It is like the different too. specific name. I think you're right. Um, but I mean, like, I try. I we don't have many of those still standing here in Charleston. Um, and I guess the Commodore is one that I can think of off the top of my head. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe that's for someone else who knows more about <laughs> that history to um, talk about it or comment on it, you know? Um, I mean, it sounds like something that's something you're interested in, Chris. Yeah. Uh, I guess I'm, I'm into what you would call, like, uh, what is it? It's like ethnomusicology and, uh, I don't know, I, I'm, like, forgetting. Yeah. That. But just like the stories and like the ethnomusicology and music anthropology. Right. And if mm-hmm. you want to like, if you like music, and you like history, you gotta look up this dude. His name is Bob Brosman. B R O Z M A N. And he was a collaborator of this uh, guy uh, who played mandolin with Jerry Garcia, David Grisman, and this guy is. He has traveled to like 90 different countries and he goes there and he learns everything about the culture 
and the music they play, and he understands why they do it and why it sounds that way. Yeah. And the first time that I saw this, it, it was, like, mind-blowing to me. Yeah. And he was like, uh, yeah, like, when you listen to reggae music, okay, reggae is different from o- other music because they're on what, you know, you would call the an, or, like, the some people call yeah. it the backbeat. Mm-hmm. And you're like, why is that? Mm. And it's like any like war movie you've ever seen, uh, when a colonizing army is like marching into battle, they have a drummer, right? Yeah. So, like they're marching to a drum beat. And so the colonizers are marching to their beat and the colonized people in like Jamaica and stuff, what are they doing? They're reacting to it. Mm -hmm. So their whole relationship and understanding of beats and is reactionary. Mm -hmm. And so, and he's like, yeah. You're like, oh yeah, of course. (laughs) But um, (laughs) yeah, it's like, dude, this this, this shit isn't like a mistake. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's there's a reason behind it. Yeah. And um, I guess I just, I just get excited about it. No, that's true. I love that stuff. Have you seen that movie, um, the Bella Fleck movie, Throw Down Your yeah. Heart, where you, that blew In my Africa? mind. Yeah, the banjo and everything. That, I love that kind of shit. Um, are you are you guys deadheads? You like uh, Grateful Dead? Very much. <laughs> he thought you'd never ask, actually. <laughs> oh, here we go. Uh, uh, I, am, uh, I am fairly obsessed with the Grateful Dead, actually. Nice. Okay, cool. <laughs> that was a great uh, transition. Segment, yeah, right? uh, I, I just had... Yeah, a lot, I could talk about the Grateful Dead for six hours straight. So, well, are you guys also <laughs> deadheads or in the same boat? Yeah, you are. Okay, Kate. Hey, Kate doesn't Kate, like fish. Kate hates yes. fish. Don't uh, say that. We're gonna take her to a fish show. <laughs> nice. Eventually, next time fish comes I don't to Charleston. Hate anything. I'm just not. No, I would, like crazy super fan. I understand, and I I like that. Like the, I think there's a little, you know, there are people who love Grateful Dead, and I think it's like the jam band thing. Yeah, there's some people who are about it, and some people who aren't. If you're um, not about it, you just haven't listened enough. Really. I think. Okay. You know, when I, whenever I don't like something, I be like, look, I don't particularly like olives. Okay, mm-hmm. and I'd be like, I will say like, I just I don't really like olives yet. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yes. The door open. I'm just not yeah. ready for all. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean. I'm just not wide for all. Yeah. No, that's but. true. I am exactly like that when it comes to my music tastes and mm-hmm. like people will recommend me stuff that's been around for a while. Like, like when I was a kid growing up, like there was nothing lamer to me than the idea of the Beatles or anything. Like when anybody mm-hmm. said anything about the Beatles, I was like, I couldn't care okay. less about these people. But right now, in my like at this point in my life, the past year, I'm all about. Oh, did you know you know Paul McCartney and this and John Lennon? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I'm a Freak or yeah. whatever. Yeah. What's crazy is sometimes you like, um, you, you need like something to like happen in your life to like understand it in a way. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like yeah. you have to be like heartbroken or, you know, it's like I always like, I love the dead for ever, right? And mm-hmm. then I went through like a breakup where I was heartbroken. And that was like around the corner, by the way. So, oh, um, nice. but I would, uh, Speaking of tumultuous history in Charleston. Yeah. I would, I would li- you know, I'd listen to this song. Yeah. And you're like, fuck, I never list. I never heard it like mm. this. Yeah. I'm hearing it from a new perspective. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? And uh, it was awesome. Mm-hmm. It was like, we were listening to Jerry Garcia band and he has this song that he plays is called Like a Road. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's kind of one of those songs like when life like gets too hard, you feel like you can't go on. Just turn around and I'll be there mm-hmm. like a road leading home. Mm-hmm. And I would listen to that shit yeah. and I would cry my eyes out. That describes how and, the music feels kind of, that band at least. And I listened mm-hmm. to Susto too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like he... The first time I ever met Justin, I was like, I just want you to know that I love and appreciate you. And I think your music is so real and so relatable. Mm-hmm. And every time I listen to Hard Drugs, I, was about to say that. I cry my eyes out. Because wow. in that song, he goes, I'm glad that I found you. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry I couldn't keep you around. Mm-hmm. That and I just yeah. like melted into a puddle, you know? But it was, what I loved about it too, was the 
acknowledgement or recognition. They're like, even though this sucks, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm still glad that it happened. You know, don't right. like be sad that it's over. Be like happy that it happened. <laughs> there you thing, go. You exactly. Know? Yeah. <laughs> what were we gonna say, Chris? Uh, no, I was just agreeing with him nice. uh, that I love that That's song. A good move. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> don't disagree. Yeah, don't uh, disagree with Chris Gardner. <laughs> um, so I, 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 I need to ask the deadhead in the room. How do you feel Which about one? Uh, <laughs> you. Um, how do you feel about John Mayer? Uh, I like John Mayer a lot. You do? Okay. Yes. I I saw him with Dead and Company, and I was, I was impressed by his uh, yeah. his playing. I honestly like I don't really know much about how that came about, like him being a part of the dead. Like, how did that come about? Uh, I think he met Bob Weir kind of randomly, and they hit it off. They just like started talking and became friends, and then uh, they decided to start a band together. They got the two original drummers, and um, band's pretty good. Yeah, and Bobby Weir is uh, coming to Charleston mm -hmm. in two weeks. Oh wow! Yeah, that's exciting. Dude, if you talk to so the thing is like every, when you think about. John Mayer uh -huh. or people like that. A lot of people like see the like pop star, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. and then they're just like immediately they're like dismissive of it. Dismissive, like, yeah. But like if you talk to anyone who plays the guitar, they're like this guy is, yeah, fucking insane Damn. on the guitar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I wish my dear friend Rob Garcia was here because he could describe it. I mean, better than I could, but he's very, very good. And, um, yeah, he makes yeah, the guitar speak in all ways I haven't heard before, for sure. Uh, I need to deep dive in his discography to familiarize myself with him. But, you know, from just like clips and things I've seen of him, it's like he's really the way he just like phrases stuff. You know, he plays with all like the space, you know what I mean? He's not mm -hmm. just shredding for no reason. Um, Seems very tasteful. I mean, he's got good influences, it seems a like. A lot of people, the criticism that he got for a while was that he played too many notes. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> and so, like, what they were... Some, some people were just saying, too, it's like... It's one of the things, it's like, I don't really like... I love jam music, but I don't like the, like, uh, 125 miles an hour, you know? I'm like, mm -hmm. dude, I don't want to be... I want to be able to chill, you know? <laughs> yeah. And so they were like, oh, I'll play too many notes. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, but he's like, he listens, he you does. know? And then he was like, he acknowledged that, he was like, damn, am I playing too many notes? <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't know. We're we're in for a mayor. There's also this really cool video that I saw like last week of, uh, it's like a, I guess it was during COVID 2020 when, and they do like a Zoom interview with John Mayer and Bill Kreutzman and a couple other people. I think O'Teal is in it as well. Nice. And they're talking about Jerry Garcia's guitar playing. And the way that, that John Mayer phrases his response, you can tell that he's like really spent a lot of time listening and trying to understand yeah. what Jerry was doing. Because he says like that he, f he feels like you can hear Jerry talking to you about how he's feeling while he's playing. Yeah. And you can also hear things that he might have been listening to at the time, like listening to certain periods. Like it's like, oh, he was listening to James Brown and I can hear it in the song. And exactly. to hear John Mayer say that means that he like, he takes it seriously yeah. enough uh -huh. and like is open-minded enough to like put in the time and understand why people love the Grateful Dead so much. Right. You know? Yeah, he's do he's like trying to do it in service of the music yeah. and stuff. Yeah, he's, he's done his homework. Did it as a fan, think, yeah. you know. That yeah. whole band too. Their whole like, it's all like uh, an homage to like what came before them. Mm -hmm. It's kind of what we're talking about too. It's just like mm -hmm. he loves to play and sort of he they play a lot of other styles of music, you know. And yeah. uh, they the one thing I like that they do is they play old sailor music. Like shanty stuff. Yeah, it's like they have a song called uh, "Out to Sea Once More," uh -huh. and it's like an old, it's like an old pirate song, you know, huh. that you would hear. And I bring it up because Chris is a sailor. Chris is a pirate. And, I am uh, a sailor. Nice. And we're we're in we're in a city where it's significant because yeah, pirates true, yeah. were here. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. You know. Blackbeard. I was gonna say, yeah, don't they say that he's like supposedly buried under the Castle Pinkney? Or I think Pinkney. he was hung at Castle Pinckney. 
Oh, okay. Interesting. Yeah. He held the city of Charleston rant. He held the harbor hostage. Uh, because him and all of his crew had syphilis. Syphilis. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, pirates have dirty decks. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. I could only imagine. Holy they, shit. He wouldn't, he, wouldn't, uh, he wouldn't let anyone go until he got a chest full of penicillin. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. I digress. No, thinking historically about, like, smells, you know what I mean? Mm. Like, I'm sure there is nothing. Nothing as rancid as stepping foot onto a pirate's ship. Oh my god! That yeah. just yeah. came. Yeah. I can tell you, I've smelled some stinky boats, and if it's anything oh. like that, oh shit! <laughs> stinky boat. <laughs> yeah, the, the, and the brink. <laughs> I just go on and on. But yeah, like right, yeah, around, like literally, like right outside or right around the corner, mm. they have these. There's a couple streets in town that have uh, people call them like cobblestones. Mm-hmm. They're actually not cobblestones. There's no, there's actually no stones in Charleston, really. We're all ballast, <laughs> it's like a marshland. It's ballast, and so oh, there are okay. ballast stones. And so if you see a street like around the corner and you think it's cobblestone, those are stones that were in the hull of ships. That so they would have a ship that would come here from like overseas. And it balances the ship out so it doesn't, like, fall over. Oh, I see. And then they would get here, and they unload the stones, and they fill it up with rice. They're like, <laughs> that's our cash crop, dude. Mm-hmm. You know? Dude, Char- Charleston's going to sink one day. Like, we're... Probably. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we're for gone. sure. It um, definitely seems to be getting worse. Mm-hmm. The flooding gets worse, it seems, That's every true. year. Let's get our, as Jim <laughs> yeah. Morrison would say, let's get our kicks in before the whole shit house goes up in flames. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, yeah. That's our motto, actually. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I want to ask you guys, um, I guess, like, leaning into, like, the rock and roll stuff. Um, I mean, in this day and age, you know, like, rock and roll, what, what does it mean to... Play rock and roll music besides being in like Greta Van Fleet or some bullshit like that. Mm. You mean Diet Led Zeppelin? <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. No, they're pretty fucking good. I, I mean, mean, yeah, they're, they're I, technically yeah, they're I good. think rock and roll isn't necessarily a sound; it's like an attitude, yeah, and like a uh, if you're if you're making music that you can. Okay, if you're an artist and you're putting like a true piece of yourself into the music and then you're going to go perform it in a way that is like letting go of any sort of um, inhibitions about expressing yourself, that would be rock and roll. Right, okay. So it doesn't I, need to be that's distorted. How I it's not Machine Gun Kelly. No, you way. could be. It could that's, be. <laughs> that's, I think, that's, no. I think you could be any genre of musician and have a rock, rock and, roll and roll attitude and be described Brett as rock Nash. and roll. Yeah. Yeah. Brett Nash is Brett very Nash rock and roll. Is rock and roll as fuck. That's really interesting to me what you're saying. Like, uh, like genre is more of an attitude than it is just like the aesthetics necessarily. Well, rock it. music is different than rock and roll in yeah. terms of how I visualize like what it is. Right. You know? Yeah. Take it away, Kate. Go for it. No, no. I, 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 I <laughs> no, totally, please. Yeah. <laughs> no, I totally agree with Chris. I think, yeah, and I think the distinction is, yeah, rock music is a genre, but rock and roll is an attitude that can be uh, found in any genre, just depending on, you know, yeah. the authenticity of the artist behind it and the, right. their attitude. Well, because I think of um, uh, country music, and I, I forget who, who, what, who it was who said it, but someone was like, you know, country music is just like three chords and the truth. You know what I mean? And so, like, uh, well. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, I mean. I'm, Sounds like Stur- a Sturgill Simpson quote or something like that. <laughs> or Willie Nelson. <laughs> yeah, I think that yeah. might have been Willie Nelson yeah. or something. I, I was watching the Ken Burns documentary about country music, and they brought it up in that sense. Um, but, I mean, yeah, country music, like, there is a lot of, um, like, the set, like, twang and, you know, the aesthetics of the sound. It's a big part of that uh, in general. But, I mean, like, can something be country music without it being, you know, acoustic guitar and, you know, wearing a 10-gallon hat, do you think? The hat's not necessary. <laughs> uh, country yeah, man. Uh, I don't know. I think it can be, you know. Mm. Um, and you don't have to agree. Like, someone could be like, mm. yo, that's not 
Mm-hmm. That's not country. Mm-hmm. That ain't country. That ain't, <laughs> that ain't yeah. country. Yeah. yeah. But I have, I have this friend. His name is Big Wet. <laughs> he's okay. like, he lives in New York City. He's on <laughs> SNL. And he's like a fake. He's like an ironic country singer. Oh, that's his persona. And he was like, he's like a Jewish dude from like the Upper East Side of Manhattan. And he has a song called Turn Up on the Weekend that's like famous as shit. It's all about like cooking steaks yeah. and like <laughs> riding horses and driving <laughs> trucks. And he looked at me, he's like, I never done any of that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like, uh, Love it. he was like, I was listening to country music. He's like, I just want to make a country song. Yeah. He's like, I could do that. Interesting. Mm-hmm. And, you know, all of the, all of like the, the people, like the trolls will come out and just be like, yeah, it's not authentic. You're appropriate. Yeah. And we're like, you know what? Nobody cares what you have to say. Yeah. <laughs> you just do whatever, do what you want, and, you know. Because he loves it, obviously. People love and it. he loves doing right. it. And it's crazy. Yeah. And, I mean, it's like, uh, with, like, electronic music, it's, you know, like, that's not an attitude. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. you need to do it electronically. Like, Aphex Twin can't be Aphex Twin with a acoustic guitar. You know no, I mean? but it could be rock and roll. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, what do you mean by that? I, I, th- I, I like that. Oh, it's like, uh... He, it's like what I described earlier is that he like any kind of electronic music that could be rock and roll too mm-hmm. you know and like how you do it or like the why you're doing it's it it's almost like, like a rebellious the, kind of thing mm-hmm. uh, like a yeah. like a freedom kind of feeling where you kind of let go of, of liberation yourself. of it yeah you yeah. let go of yourself you let go of inhibitions fear of judgment and you just like purely either absorb or portray the art in in a pure way and that that would be mm. rock and roll so electronic music yeah that's true yeah like rock and roll specifically that's like an overarching thing and like dude you want to see some rock and roll you go out to a simplicity show simplicity that's the I'll best heard of fucking that. rock and roll band in charleston right now <laughs> pretty good mm-hmm. nice. hands down <laughs> like, oh, yeah, I don't so care. Far. Yeah, if you if you think otherwise, <laughs> like prove me wrong, because I would love to this see bait. it. Okay, I would love to see that. I would love to see it. We need to get. We need. We need to do some music debates. Dude, you need mm-hmm. a simplicity. Best rock and roll band in Charleston. You heard it here. Yeah, that's coming straight from the horse's mouth, folks. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Um, what kind of um, what, what's your like? What's your favorite genre of music? Go down the line. Uh, I like, that's a really hard question, but I like singer songwriter. Like I can name a few of my favorite artists Mm -hmm. if that makes more sense. Uh, uh, songwriter wise, I really like Jason Isbell, uh, indie rock band. I really like Wilco. Yeah. And uh, every day listening, I really like the Grateful Dead. (laughs) Nice. Okay. (laughs) That makes yeah. I mean, Grateful Dead. There's a lot. Of, you can listen to that all day, every day, yeah. and stuff. Um, I don't know. It's hard to nail things down based on genre. I also feel like the most interesting artists are the people who are sort of melding genres and and playing with them and not really like adhering to one specific uh, hard and fast you know categorization. Right. Um, but I mean, the stuff that I like to listen to is all across the board. Um, I guess you know I like a lot of. Sort of the indie rock stuff, um, dream pop, indie pop. Big fan of anything that's kind of like ethereal. Yeah. I'm also into the shoesy, shoegazy stuff that we talked about earlier. Um, you know, getting more into hip hop um, as nice. we as we go forward. I mean, there's so many amazing hip hop artists in Charleston too, which is I think something that we're um, really excited about. So I'm definitely dipping my toe more into that nice. field as well. Well, as yeah, was just saying, it's like you know what the you know what the best drink is. <laughs> like what? It's like another one. <laughs> so it's like, it's like, I, like, I just li- like, I like what I'm listening to mm-hmm. at the moment, you know? And yeah. like you said, yeah. she's so cool. Like, <laughs> yeah, I was like, damn, that was, that was a, that was a really good point. Is the, the like genre, you know, melding, melding, mm-hmm. if you yeah. will. And I, I had these old roommates that were from Pakistan. And they were like the coolest dudes that I knew at the time. They were like six five, 
Muslim punks. Oh, nice. <laughs> and the youngest brother had this band. It was called Sunny Ali and the Kid. Okay. And the kid was the weed guy on Vice, but they were a, they were, a mus. They were a, mu, two Muslim guys playing punk country music. Wow. And it was at it was at like two thousand and two, yeah. right after September eleventh. When, guess what? Everybody like country music hates Muslims. Exactly. And so they were like, they were like, yeah. they were like, dude, we're gonna play your music. Wow. And it's awesome. And. I, honestly, it's one of my favorite bands of all time. Wow. All the songs are like, it's like a minute and a half long. Uh-huh. And you're like, oh, I just listened to that 10 times. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. Another one. That's so interesting. I mean, I I wonder specifically, like, I mean, what was the audience reactions like? Did, were they out playing music, like playing live during that time? Or like? Well, they were. were so it was almost like a so performance they, art There thing, were three like. brothers and they were in this band that were called the Popo or Popo. <laughs> cool. And they met Diplo at this party in like fucking Georgia or something. And he lived in Philadelphia. He was performing under the name Hollertronics at the time. Mm-hmm. And he met my friends and he signed them. They were the first band that Diplo ever signed to Mad Decent. Okay. Uh, which do not confuse that with Extra Chill. Uh, which is totally cooler, by the way. Um, and as the yeah, same awesome. power is just way better, I will say. Well, is um, that something that you guys are wanting to get into, like signing people and doing that kind of thing? No. Okay. No. Uh, booking larger events is what I'm, what we would like to get into. Nice, yeah. You like the throwing events and getting people involved and that kind of thing? I like creating a space where people can enjoy music and I like to I like to put artists together that don't usually end up on the same bill together and make nice. for like a fun little weird party. Yeah. Yeah, which That's we're cool. actually doing. Yeah. Oh cool. Plug that. What's going on? Oh uh, well it hasn't been announced yet, but I'll tell you when it is. <laughs> okay. We'll be yeah I'll... it is March eighteenth at the Royal American and uh it's gonna be a good time. You just gotta mm. take our word for it, I guess. It's yeah. gonna be fun. <laughs> yeah, you tell me about that when we're when we're done. I wanna hear more about that. Yeah. Um Specifically, I was curious, um, where, where where did Extra Chill come from? Where did that name come from? <laughs> uh, there's a long version of the story that I won't tell. <laughs> okay. But I... Uh, they went however long you want. Um, I got all the time in the world. <laughs> no, I just kind of randomly... Me and my friends uh, one night in college, we were uh, pretty drunk, and we were just talking talking shit to each other and like making fun of each other, like like you know, 19 year old dudes do. And uh, we were saying that like (laughs) one of my friends had extra beef, meaning that he was like, you know, easily annoyed and like kind (laughs) of getting, getting uptight about something that wasn't necessary. And we just kept harping on it. And we were saying it all night long to the point where it was like purposely getting annoying. And then the next day I woke up and I like had the word extra in my head and I started putting it in front of other things. And it just like kind of came to me like extra chill. And Said it to my friend, and I went and I bought the domain name. And nice. The website was called something else at the time, uh, and now it's called this. Nice. The rest is history. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 exactly. <laughs> and that was 2013, I think, or 2012. Wow. I was a sophomore at CFC. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah, so you've been doing this for a long, long time. For well, when, at that time, it was not a local music blog. I would post okay. like poems and short stories and random thoughts almost like an online journal and i didn't really share it with anybody uh except for my friends and some of my friends were like into reading what i had to write about Uh and i uh, eventually made friends with some local musicians and they gave me their record human resources some people listening might have heard of them i used to work at a store with matt zutel who has coast records and he gave me a copy of the human resources album and i like i listened to it and liked it and wrote a review of it, and he was like, dude, that's pretty cool. Like, why don't you just write about the music scene more often? Nice. And I started doing that, and... The rest is awesome. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're so... They're, like... You know, you have, like, friends who are just, like, in awe of. Yeah. And it was just like, dude, I get to... I get to be friends with this guy. <laughs> dude, everyone in that band and Human Resources is, like, so fucking talented really? that like I just look at them in awe wow and uh you he's know he's the one who does like coast records right mm-hmm. okay cause yeah, I've heard of that everyone in that band oh. is either like a they're like 
producer, photographer, yeah, um, videographer, cable knit swear uh, sweater wearer, <laughs> <laughs> and, and plays in like six different. Yeah, they play yeah. in all the bands, and it's all perfect. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. Wow, that's interesting stuff. Um, well, what kind of stuff are you looking forward to in the future besides more um, more live events, putting on more shows? Are you guys trying to expand and getting more writers on board and stuff? Or um... Yes. Yes. Nice. We just hired a writer. He's just getting started this week. Uh, we have... Uh... I'm looking forward to hopefully expanding Extra Chill to reach an audience in the whole entire Southeast and yes. hopefully become a source for music, not just in Charleston, uh-huh. based in Charleston, but reaching the whole Southeast. And nice. I would like to build up to eventually throwing a yearly music festival where people come and they camp for two or three days nice. and see a show, and that would be what Extra Chill is. Eventually. We're going to call it the Major that's awesome. Rager. Major Rager? <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's... It's going to be called Extra Chill Fest. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. The Major Rager already it's, exists. Yeah. But, you know, this is this is We're dreams and a uh, five-year plan. But for now, I'm taking it step by step. Mm-hmm. And yeah. thankfully, I have these wonderful people to work with. And That's awesome. We're, yeah, we're looking for more wonderful people. So We don't call it work. It's like because, mm-hmm. yeah. We're having fun. We have a good time. It's recess. Yeah. It's recess. <laughs> it sounds like it. If no. you love what you do, you never work a day in your life. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, definitely. Right? Well, I mean, it sounds like, you know, you guys have a lot of fun doing it together. And I could sit here and talk to each of you guys about music for a long time. I wish we had more time to do that. But um, everybody. I you had all the time in the world. Uh, <laughs> just said that. I feel bad. I, I, know, I, I, know, I, know, I just got warmed up. Been, was, I heard the alarm go off. That's just my. That was my uh, yeah, my car. Got, the parking uh, meter. Hot, so I'll get a boot. Whatever. It doesn't matter. But yeah, I don't want to keep you guys for too long. But perfect. Um, Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, no, dude, guys, thank you so much for spending time with us. Uh, it was it was that really was cool awesome. talking to you guys. Mm-hmm. Here, um, present for you. Oh. Oh my God! There we go. Look at uh, that, if, guys. If you see any of us yeah. around town, we have free stickers at all times. I love that. Oh, thank you so much, um, everybody. Go follow Extra Chill on Instagram and check out extrachill.com. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Actually, if you care at all about us <laughs> or music in general in Charleston, just go to our website and just click some stuff. And uh, do that a lot. Don't, 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 <laughs> don't do that. Don't listen to anything that he just said. Just don't, do all that because that would be sick. Don't get us banned. Yeah, no, yeah. Don't do that, but just click stuff. Exactly. <laughs> click articles. Right. Mm-hmm. Don't click any ads. And read. Them. <laughs> and read them. And read them, <laughs> please. Read them. Exactly. <laughs> right. Thank you so much. This has been. Yeah. Thank you. Oh Thanks. no! Thank you guys. Yeah, I know the rest yeah, of the day. Praise me a little bit. I could tell. Yeah, give me some compliments. So, yeah, <laughs> I could tell that uh, one of my favorite compliments is to be like, you have uh, kind eyes. Mm-hmm. You know, when you like look at somebody and you're like, mm-hmm. you see that. You Thank know, you. Like, you. should tell my ex that. comfortable. <laughs> 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 Apple juice.